Let's start in Group B. We'll go through pretty quickly the groups before we get to the, the meaty end of the competition. And with us not knowing if it's going to be Wales or Ukraine or Scotland, England, Iran and USA. And you've got England winning the group and, and the USA coming in second. Was that an easy decision for you? England going first seems the logical decision. And, and if you choose to trust England in anywhere in the World Cup, it would be maybe in the group stage. Uh, after that, I'm not so certain, but it feels like in the group stage, they'll be able to show that they are superior to their competition. And the USA will have to get by Iran and then get by whoever comes out of that playoff. But I trust that Greg sure. Halter's men will be able to manage that and navigate their way out of the group. Group C, how difficult was it for you? You've got Argentina winning this group, but you've got Poland knocked out. So no Lewandowski through to the knockout stage with Mexico going through as runners up. Was that a difficult decision for you? It was because of the Lewandowski factor. It would not have been had Lewandowski not been part of this team, but you know that he is capable of doing something special for you. Uh, Mexico, while they seem to have been struggling in qualifiers, uh, well, they still made it into the World Cup, and it's a team that, generally speaking, when it comes to the World Cup, they find a way of getting through. I think they're going to be the ones coming in second in that group. Okay, uh, we quickly bypass the group stages, and here are the sides who Ali has qualifying for the round of 16. So the United States reward for getting through mm -hmm. would be, according to you, if this all happened, a matchup against the Netherlands. What do you think happens in this one? Well, good old US of A. It was a great experience, guys. Hey, hey, getting out of the group was great, guys. Good job, good work. Good work in getting to the World Cup, being back in the competition, but this is where the dream ends. See you guys later. Come on home. One of the other ones you have, Spain against Croatia. Now, how close were you to having that as Spain against Canada? Because they would be in the same group, Spain against either Croatia or Canada. You've gone Croatia. Any thoughts about potentially that being Spain against Canada? Canada has been the most entertaining team in CONCACAF to watch, the most consistent team in CONCACAF to watch. And it's great to have them in the World Cup for the first time since 1986. Mm, but it's going to be three games and out. I'm sorry to my friends in Canada, but I just thought that Croatia and their experience would be too much in that group. I think the most mouth-watering tie, although there's so many of them, but the pick of the bunch is probably Belgium against Germany. Two heavyweights, two European heavyweights meeting in your round of, of 16. Who do you like in that one? It is about time for Belgium to do something significant at the World Cup and get to the semis and get to the final, the golden generation, and that time has passed. I am done believing in Belgium. I've been full one time too many with Belgium, and at this point, if I'm going to trust somebody between these two teams, I'm going to say that Germany advances. Now, in order for Germany to play Belgium, they would have to finish second to Spain in their group. That's a real key there, because if Germany, for some reason, were able to finish first, then it changes the whole dynamic. But Spain goes through, they play Croatia, they go through, and then Germany get past Belgium. Both of them advance onto the quarterfinal. In those quarterfinals, you've got an England against France matchup. So England, you have beating Senegal, a slightly different proposition, a harder, tougher proposition in France for the English if they reach the quarterfinal. So what happens? I'll tell you what happens. It's not coming home. That's what that's what happens. <laughs> I'll tell you who is going home. It's England. But the trophy is not coming home. The World Cup is not coming home. Uh, the, the, the dream ends here for England and France that I think the best thing that could have happened to them is their lack of success or perceived success in the Euros, I think, has motivated this group of players. And they'll be a little too much for England. While England will fight and they'll make it close, I think France, just a little too much for England, France advance. We use a phrase quite a bit, a popcorn matchup. Get your popcorn ready. It's probably the tie of the round. All four of these 
are, are phenomenal. You go through a, a fair bit of popcorn watching them. Let's start with your first quarter final, the Netherlands against Argentina. Is that a toss of the coin as to who goes through? A uh, toss of the coin that leans uh, towards Argentina. And, and yeah, it's a classic matchup and it's a matchup that we have seen before at this same stage in the World Cup. If you go back to the 98 World Cup, it was, in that case, it was a beautiful goal. If you remember from Dennis Bergkamp, the ball over the top from Frank De Boer, Bergkamp cuts it over, over the head of the defender, Roberto Ayala, and then finishes with the outside of his right foot. Uh, historic goal in the World Cup. They'll need some of that, but guess what? Bergkamp is not playing, so Lionel Messi is. Argentina advances. You have a, a do not disturb button on your phone. A lot of people don't know how to use it, but make sure you know how to use it when Spain play Brazil. Do not disturb anybody watching this game. But who wins? I love me some of these younger players for Spain, and I love me some Pedro. Let me tell you something. I love him, and he's going to be great in the World Cup, and he's going to be great in this game. But you know what Spain lacks is the attacking third. That final product is not quite there for Spain. And you look what Brazil can give you in the attacking half themselves and what they can do and the variety of options that they have. That's where the difference will be. These teams will both have possession of the ball, will both entertain, but then we get to the final third. And I think Spain comes up short in that area, whereas Brazil is going to succeed, they advance. Okay, we've already spoken about how you think France will be England in the quarterfinal. The last quarterfinal matchup that you have is Germany against Portugal. Does Ronaldo's 30 something years take him past the quarterfinals and past Germany, or is this the end of the road for Cristiano? Sadly, it is the end of the road for Cristiano. And, and for me, it's more a reflection of the fact that this team in Portugal, while talented, they, I always get the sense when I watch them that they could give me more. And I keep waiting for this, this whole group of talented players to really mesh and come together and be this dynamic team that I think they can be. And they just haven't been able to do so with consistency. So for me, Portugal will advance into the quarterfinals, but that'll be it. Germany, all too much for Portugal. Germany advanced. Okay, semi-final time, last four. What sounds more glamorous to you, Ali? Winners of match 57 against winners of match 58 or Argentina versus Brazil? Oh, boy. And, and this was tough. Let me tell you something. This was tough because as a South American, what I would like to see is for them to play in the final. Mm. This is where I would like to see Argentina playing against Brazil. And I was tempted so very tempted to continue the fairy tale of Lionel Messi and him closing out his career at the international level with a World Cup. And then I woke up and fairy tales do not exist. Brazil, while not only are they talented in the attack, I think they're going to be carrying some of those bad feelings from having lost to Argentina in the Copa America final. And you don't forget this thing and you don't forget these experiences. I think there is a certain level of motivation here for Brazil to be at their very best. And while people may focus on Neymar, the, the player who I think may be the difference maker for Brazil in this sort of game may not be Neymar. It may just be Vinicius Jr. If he does that, then I think Brazil is able to advance. I love the balance of your bracket because you get two South American heavyweights in one semifinal and you've got two European heavyweights in your other semi-final, France and Germany. But who goes through? And I had to go back to 1986, when I was a young kid, just, just growing up <laughs> in Venezuela, watching in a late afternoon, France taking on Germany in the semi-final of that World Cup. And sadly, back then, from who was my favorite player at the time, Michel Platini, they were eliminated. They had to play the third and fourth place matchup because of a 2 nothing defeat to Germany. Uh, yeah. France gets some revenge here. France advances, and, and they're able to try to defend their, their, their title in the final. Yeah, they get Brazil, Ali. 
Okay. <laughs> the the, the well. floor is yours. How do we preview this mouth-watering matchup if that's what happens? <laughs> well, I said that they got revenge on Germany. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> say that they were going to win the whole thing. And it, w what a moment it will be. And, and, and what a... When you think about revenge, then... And, and this is not something that I live with every day, but apparently it comes out when it comes to down to the bracket. Because then 1998 final, where Brazil playing France in France, and you had the whole Ronaldo saga. Is he, is he going to play? Is he not going to play? Frank LeBouf will remind us of how of a shutdown <laughs> defender he was in that final against Ronaldo. He, he didn't do... He didn't allow him to do anything on the field and France were so dominant. This changes now. This changes in Qatar. Brazil, turn around the story. And while you may look at France and look at so many options that they have and so talented, they're not going to be able to withstand the variety in attack of Brazil. And while you focus on the variety of attack in Brazil, Defensively, they've been solid. Through the midfield, they do a lot of good work. There's a lot of balance to this team that doesn't get highlighted because of the names that are in the attacking half. I'm going to take Brazil in what would be a very, very entertaining final. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.